Well, good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Larry Dentler from Bermudian Church of the Brethren, and we are so happy that you have joined us for worship on uh, Sunday, August 30, 2020. Can you believe it's the end of August already? Uh, some of the children are back to school. Some will be this week, and it's that time of year, but we're glad that, glad that you're with us. A uh, couple announcements. Uh, this week on Tuesday... Uh, our Women's Fellowship will be starting together again for the fall. They will be meeting at 6 o'clock in the gathering place. We'd love to have you join them. All the ladies of the church are welcome. And then at 7 o'clock in the gathering place on Tuesday, the Executive Committee and Stewards Commissions will be meeting for their annual uh, budget meeting, plus some other things that we'll need to discuss since we haven't been meeting as much. So. Again, Tuesday evening in the gathering place, Women's Fellowship meeting at 6, and the Executive Committee and Stewardship Commission at 7. Uh, decision was made uh, by our deacons to hold our fall love feast as normally scheduled. That would be Sunday, October 4th. It will be at 5.30 in the gathering place, and we are doing some, uh, some simple things to uh, make our gathering safe so it will be a little bit different we'll we'll be seated just four persons at a round table uh, we'll be using some pre-packaged food items for the meal instead of our normal good soup uh, and we'll be doing uh, feet washing with uh, disposable wipes that was something that we did at annual conference that worked very well so it'll be a little different but a lot the same the the scriptures the songs uh, the richness of that evening of worship together will be just as always. So we hope you can join us again that Sunday evening, October 4th, 5.30 in the Gathering Place. And we would like you to uh, register ahead of time so we know how many to set up for because we don't know what size and, and we'd like to set up appropriately. So if you think you're coming, give the office a call, 717-292-1861, uh, and we'll add you to the list. We've also uh, made a decision within this past week that we will have our fall revival as scheduled October 18 to 21. Uh, you probably know that Brother Elmer Towns from Liberty University was going to be with us. We've been so looking forward to having Dr. Towns. Uh, he's not going to be able to be with us, but I'm pleased to announce that uh, Pastor Roger Myers from our Brant's congregation uh, has agreed to come on rather short notice uh, to be our revival speaker. You'll, you'll love and appreciate Roger. He's a great Christian man, uh, conservative faith. He's going to be speaking to us about the book of Daniel, and we're excited about that. Uh, if you love to study the prophecy in Revelation, Daniel is the Old Testament equivalent and very important. Uh, our plan at this point is to be able to record those much like we did the Vacation Bible School classes we've just had. So you'll be able to come face-to-face -face at 7 o'clock each of those evenings, October 18 to 21, uh, or you'll be able to see it online. So again, get that on your calendar. I know some were anxious that we not cancel our fall revival. It's so important to us, and it's such a big time in our life together and so we're happy to be able to do that the sisters uh, bible study will begin for the fall on wednesday september 9th at nine o'clock in the gathering place with sister louise and uh, again all the ladies of the church welcome we'd love to have you join us as we ease back in take little steps back in to a more normal pattern uh, one of the things that's really been on my heart about that we need to get back to is some children's ministry and so we've been thinking about offering some children's ministry uh, as kind of a, a first step back to that part of our ministry that would happen during the sermon time of our nine o'clock worship on sunday morning we could bring the children over to shepherd's hall uh, the, the surfaces are all hard surfaces in there so we can clean them just the way we do in shepherd's hall and um, we could do some ministry with the children. I heard one family say that their children have cried about missing Sunday school. Well, I've cried about it too. Uh, 
uh, miss seeing the children and would love to have them back. So if we're going to do that, we need some help with that. So if you'd be interested in taking a Sunday a month or something like that to teach with that group, uh, if you have children and have some thoughts about that, we'd love to hear them. Uh, any comments or help, uh, we'd really like to hear from you. Uh, no definite plan for the when or exactly the how yet, but it's certainly something we want to move towards uh, as quickly as we can uh, for our children. So think about that, pray about that, and if you could help with that, uh, let us know. I believe we can do that safely and uh, bless the children. Uh, and again, what we're thinking for right now is that during our 9 o'clock worship on Sunday mornings in the gathering place, the children who go out at like at prayer time and uh, for the prayer and the sermon time could have a, a lesson and some time together over in Shepherd's Hall. So think about that and let us know if you'd be willing to help. Today we continue our study of Psalm 119, the wonderful psalm that teaches us so much about the Bible. And uh, in the portion we're in today, <clears throat> our author is very excited. Uh, we've watched, haven't we? We've watched his mood go up and down. Does that sound like real life? Yes. Uh, so uh, let's uh, enter into worship. We're going to, we're going to sing a song, uh, an old hymn that I love, uh, The Light of the World is Jesus. And I think in this day, with so much darkness around us, oh, how much the world needs the, the light of our Lord Jesus. So, uh, Join me as we sing the, the light of the world is Jesus. This is an old Philip Bliss hymn. The whole world was lost in the darkness of sin. The light of the world is Jesus. Like sunshine at noonday, his glory shone in. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light. Tis shining for thee, sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see, the light of the world is Jesus. No darkness have we who in Jesus abide, the light of the world is Jesus. We walk in the light when we follow our guide. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light, tis shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. Ye dwellers in darkness with sin-blinded eyes, The light of the world is Jesus. Go wash at his bidding, the light will arise. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light, tis shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. No need of the sunlight in heaven, we're told. The light of the world is Jesus. The Lamb is the light in the city of gold. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light, tis shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. Can you say amen? Yes, amen. The light of the world is Jesus. We're going to do the little chorus, more precious than silver. Uh, in our psalm portion today, the, the writer's talking about the, the worth of God's word to him. And so let's sing more precious than silver. And then as a second verse, 
Um, I wrote these words when we planted uh, Lakeview Christian Fellowship back on June 8th of 1997 as a new congregation. And uh, I like putting the two together. So uh, sing with me. First, the very familiar words to the chorus, more precious than silver. And then we'll sing to that same tune, uh, Lord, send your spirit. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds. And nothing I desire compares with you. Lord, you are our God who is holy. Lord, you are amazing in grace. Lord, you are the God of new beginnings. Please send your spirit now upon this place. Please send your spirit now upon this place. Please send your spirit now upon this place. Amen. And that's our prayer. The Lord would send his spirit to be with us. Well, as we come to prayer time, I have some things to share with you, some updates. Of course, as we mentioned, we had a major emphasis last week on back to school, and some of our folks are back to school now, some starting back this week, some into September. But we continue to pray for school officials, for teachers, for school room helpers and bus drivers and uh, all kinds of the school workers and for families, uh, for parents and for the young people, for those who are uh, back to classroom kind of full time for those who are doing kind of a hybrid kind of thing for those who are needing to study online those who have, have done in the past and some are trying new now homeschooling uh, oh we pray for you all uh, and it's not that there's a right or a wrong but we're all trying to do the best we can and we know you are and so we pray for you Louise Julius had extensive vein surgery in her leg on Friday. She did very well and has had very little pain. She's recovering at home. Her daughter is with her. Uh, Donna Shive continues recovery from the eye infections that uh, she developed after uh, getting some dust from mulch in her eyes. She tells me that one eye has cleared pretty well. The other is still fuzzy. She's on two different antibiotics and will be for two more weeks. Some med changes for our brother Victor Riddle really stirred up his fibromyalgia and uh, he's been a lot of pain. We want to pray for him. Sharon Stepp, uh, my sister-in-law, has been asking us to pray for her friend's daughter, you'll remember, who was uh, pregnant with two little babies, twin, twin little girls, and uh, they were coming too early and she was developing some complications. Well, she gave birth to them uh, this week uh, Bria and Briella, and uh, they're born at Wednesday. They're only three pounds each, so tiny, tiny. Uh, they're all still in the hospital, but stable and improving. And the mother, Amy, is expected to be able to come home today. And so let's continue just to pray so much for these dear little ones and for that family. We continue to pray for Jeff Mayo as he recovers from his knee surgery at Encompass Health. Kim Shear and Shirley Smith have asked our prayers for uh, Tim. You remember he's been on our prayer list. He had emergency surgery Saturday morning at Hershey Medical Center. Radiation treatments he's been receiving for his cancer uh, had a bad effect on his carotid artery and started bleeding, and so they had to take him in for emergency surgery. Uh, we continue to pray for Marion Price now at... Um, up in Mechanicsburg at the bridges of Bent Creek and for Brother Wilmer as he walks with his dear wife through this time. We continue to remember our brother Jacob Shear, who sometime now in September 
will be leaving Texas where he's been in training and heading over to Iraq for a year of deployment. Charmaine Hoke has had us praying for friends of hers in Florida, Stephanie and Paul Waldron. She wants to report that they both have done much better. Uh, Paul was especially sick. He's off the ventilator uh, and just with a tracheotomy now. He's been cleared of COVID and will be moving to a rehab in St. Augustine. Uh, still very weak, but we're thankful for signs of improvement. We pray for them. And Mike and Sandy Neff have kept us praying uh, over the last months for friends and neighbors of theirs, the Reinhardts. Uh, Luther has been discharged now from the first round of treatment. They, they remember they're in Texas. Uh, his numbers that they monitor are improving daily. The stem cells seem to be doing uh, what they want them to do. Uh, there's been a local Baptist church there that's been so helpful in ministering to them. And uh, Luther's even been able to work some online, uh, grading homework for graduate level courses at Texas A&M. It will be a year for his immune system uh, to recover and mature. And uh, they'll remain in Houston until September 9th since he needs to be pretty close contact with the hospital. But signs of God's healing and help uh, for this brother who's had a long journey. So we, we're thankful and we keep them in prayer. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you when we can celebrate healing. Thank you when we can celebrate your touch. We, we think of Luther and we're so thankful. And uh, we think of Charmaine's friend Paul and so thankful for how well Louise did this week. And we're, we're very thankful. Lord, we'd, and for these babies, uh, Bria and Briella, uh, oh Lord, hold them in your loving hands. Keep the mother and the father and the grandparents close to your heart. Lord, continue to bring healing that these dear little ones uh, may be healthy and okay and home with their family. Lord, we give you praise and thanks for your presence in our lives always. For every good and perfect gift, as your word says, that comes from your hand. Uh, Lord God, you are our, our Father who does not change. There are no shifting of shadows, no changing. Uh, you're a constant we can depend on when the whole world seems to be unsteady. Thank you. We continue to pray uh, for those going back to school. Uh, for our teachers and helpers and school officials, for parents and children and youth. Oh, Lord, be, be with all our young people, be with all our families, be with all our school workers, because everything is so different. Keep them safe and help them to learn and grow. Thank you, Lord. And we continue to pray for this nation. It's in a very divided time. We continue to pray for our state. And all the states that we represent as we watch here online, we continue to pray for our local communities that you'll keep us safe and you'll help us to take care of each other and to take care of our families. But Lord, most of all for our churches that we might serve you, witness for you, reach out to others in the precious and holy and matchless name of Jesus. Lord, the light of the world is Jesus, and may we all be very, very committed to sharing that light in a dark, dark world. Lord, I, Lord, I pray for each one who is watching this morning, each individual, each family, that you would be especially near, that their living room or their bedroom or their kitchen where they're watching is as purely and as surely your chapel as if we were right here in this sanctuary all together. For Lord, that's what we long for, but most of all, your presence, your power, your care for us is what we seek. Thank you, Lord, we love you. Thank you for Jesus, our Savior, and for his shed blood, for the forgiveness of sin. And we bring all these prayers to you, we bring these praises to you, we bring our love to you in the name of Jesus. And we remember the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. How sweet are your words to my taste. I said about there's some some verses that will come out of Psalm 119 along the way that are just wonderful ones to memorize, and this is certainly one of those. What's your favorite meal? No, I mean your really favorite meal. Is it? A perfectly prepared steak serves sizzling on that platter. Or some fresh caught and excellently prepared seafood served dripping with butter. How about fresh vegetables of the season, those fresh tomatoes out of the garden, the fresh sweet corn. I had some this week. It was so good. Maybe a special recipe that mom used to make. As you think about your favorite meal, can you picture it? Can you smell it? Can you taste it? Now, if you're in a time like many of us, when we want to eat healthier and perhaps take off some weight, beware of the teaching that says that food is simply fuel. Don't focus on food because food is just fuel. No. Food is much more than that. From a biblical standpoint, food is a symbol of God's great provision. From a biblical standpoint, food is a symbol of hospitality. From a biblical standpoint, food is a symbol of family and friend fellowship. God designed food to be savored and enjoyed. He could have created a simple green protein block that grew on a tree that we would pick and eat and would have provided everything we need for nourishment. But no, he didn't. He created food with a wide diversity of colors and taste and aromas, sweet and spicy, bitter and strong, mellow, God designed food for our pleasure, you see. Now, of course, food can be abused, and overeating can become an addiction. And we need to be honest with ourselves about that. But in this portion of Psalm 119 that we approach today, the psalm writer makes a comparison between food and God's word. And he savors the Bible, the Word of God, like a great meal. So again, I'll ask, what's your favorite meal? Now, mine is chicken and waffles. Mm. Now, for those of you listening to this who are not listening from a Pennsylvania Dutch, Pennsylvania German area like, like where I am. Those of you listening in Florida, those of you listening in Indiana and some other places, I want you to be clear about what I'm talking about. A few years ago, Kentucky Fried Chicken announced it was adding chicken and waffles to its menu. And I was so excited because I love chicken and waffles. But what they served and called chicken and waffles was a piece of their tasty fried chicken held between two waffles. No. No. That's not chicken and waffles. That's simply chicken served with waffles. Fried chicken 
and a side of waffles is not, hear me, it's not chicken and waffles. Real chicken and waffles, real Pennsylvania Dutch chicken and waffles. It's thick, creamy, savory chicken gravy filled with big chunks of chicken meat slathered over waffles <laughs> and often served with mashed potatoes that are also covered with that wonderful gravy. Oh boy, yum. Sarah at Renee's in East Berlin has it on her menu regularly. And she makes it just right. And when she sits that large hot platter in front of me, it's a delight to the eyes. The aroma is wonderful. And the taste mm, is amazing. This is true comfort food. If you're not familiar with it, try it. The psalm writer today says, how sweet are your promises to my taste. He's savoring God's word. I wonder, do we approach the word of God with that kind of delight that we approach a favorite meal? We are at the 13th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Mem, uh, which is roughly equivalent to our letter M. So let's read now Psalm 119, verse 97 to 104, uh, the section we'll be looking at today. If you have your Bibles, turn with me. Psalm 119, 97 to 104. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. I have kept my feet from every evil path, so that I might obey your word. I have not departed from your laws, for you yourself have taught me how sweet are your promises to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts, therefore I hate every wrong path. May the Lord add his blessing to our reading and our hearing of his precious word. So let's review about this amazing Psalm 119. Uh, we said repeatedly it's the longest chapter in the whole Bible. Uh, it's at the very center of the Bible as though God is set looking back to the Old Testament and forward to the New saying this is true about my word. It's an acrostic, you'll remember. Uh, 22 stanzas of eight verses each. Each of those stanzas beginning with one of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet and each verse within the stanza beginning with that same letter that all gets lost in English so don't look for it there although many of our Bibles will have that Hebrew letter before each of the stanzas or something just to show that uh, the psalm is entirely about God's word from beginning to end 176 verses all about God's word and it uses throughout eight different words that speak of God's word in NIV, those eight words are law, statute, precept, command, decree, word, way, promise. They'll vary a little bit from translation to translation. But what we said is uh, don't get hung up on those words, that they are just, just different words used in kind of poetic fashion as the Psalms are written uh, to talk about God's word. So uh, when he says law, he means Bible. When he says precept, he means Bible. When he says command, he means Bible. When he says statute or promise or way, he means Bible. So we don't need to get hung up in those. Uh, back at the end of 2019, when uh, the Lord laid this upon my heart to preach this series this year, and I began to put everything together, and as we entered into 2020, who could imagine we'd be where we are today 
But I said then, and I think it's still so, so true, today more than ever, it's critical that each believer have absolute clarity, 2020 vision, if you will, about what the Bible is. Pastor Tim Davis, whose notes we've been uh, looking at, uh, quotes for us from uh, Martin Luther. He says, the Bible's alive. It speaks to me. It has feet. It runs after me. It has hands. It lays hold of me. The Bible is not antique or modern. Uh, it's eternal. The writer of the psalm says with great joy, God's word, the Bible, makes me and then gives us three wonderful answers. The first is that God's word, the Bible, makes me satisfied. Verse 97 and verse 103 say, Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to the mouth. God's word, the Bible, makes me satisfied. At the end of a great meal, when you push back, you feel very satisfied. This was good. This was satisfying. And you see, as we dig deeply and feast upon the smorgasbord buffet that is God's word, we come to some understanding. Because we're reading, as we study God's word from beginning to end, we're reading history, we're reading prophecy, we're reading hymns, we're reading gospels, we're reading letters. And we come to an understanding of the beauty of God's mind. What C.S. Lewis called the engaging moral order of the divine, divine mind. When we look around us, we see the chaos of the unsaved world. And we're seeing it a lot today. Chaos. But if we look at what God's word teaches us, we see the simple beauty and wonder of God's order. And it's like enjoying our favorite meal. So good. We're not left filled with questions. We feel full. We feel satisfied. God is so good, and his order for our world is so perfect. King David writes in Psalm 34, Open your mouth and taste, open your eyes and see how good God is. Blessed are you who run to him. And the writer of the Hebrew letter in the New Testament speaks of those of us, you and me, who partake richly of the Bible, speaks of us as those who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God. So God's Word, the Bible, makes me satisfied. Second, God's Word, the Bible, makes me strong. Verses 98 to 100 Say, your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. Now, just as eating well provides proper nutrition for strong, healthy bodies, a steady diet of God's word provides spiritual nutrition to make us strong in the Lord. Attention to God's order brings wisdom. Now that's a wisdom that's not always understood or appreciated by the unsaved world. You stand for God's truth today. You stand for what God has said. And there'll be some pushback from the unsaved world. 
but it grants us a grace, a safety, a security, and an assurance that few know. So many of you have commented to me that as you watched uh, our celebration service for my Kathy, where does that kind of assurance that she had and that peace that she had even as she faced her death come from? I have to say, I'm, I don't really know either, except that she feasted on the Word of God. In her last days and months and years, more and more, all she wanted to take in was God's Word. And I think that made her strong. granted her a grace, a safety, a security, an assurance that, that few, few will know. We learn and believe as we feast on God's word that if God says no, that's for our best. We learn and believe that if God says do this, that we will be healthier, we'll be happier, we'll be more fulfilled if we obey what he says. We learn and believe that every promise of Scripture is a promise we can trust, we can count on, we can take it to the bank. If God says he'll do it, he'll do it. So we face trials, temptations, odd seasons like this season we're living in now, uncertain futures, even death, with confidence and security. We begin to understand, as Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 2.10, the deep things of God. And we begin to know, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2.16, the very mind of Christ. And this gives us an understanding for life and faith that surpasses what so many so-called wise people really have. Strong in the Lord. God's word, the Bible, makes me strong. The Apostle Paul writes to the Corinthians, for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. And to the Philippians, Paul wrote, For I can do everything God asks me to do with the help of Christ who gives me the strength and power. God's word, the Bible, makes me strong. And then, our writer says, God's word, the Bible, makes me steady. Verses 101, 102, 104 say, I have kept my feet from every evil path, so that I might obey your word. I have not departed from your laws, for you yourself have taught me. I gain understanding from your precepts, therefore I hate every wrong path. Let's be honest. Walking the journey of this life can be difficult. And especially now, in these days, Walking this journey can be difficult. There's so much conflicting information swirling around us continually. So many experiences that we're facing that we've never faced before. So many temptations to leave the Christ path. But a commitment to God's word helps one develop a lifestyle where sin is less alluring and God's ways more delightful, like that favorite meal we like. You see, God's word, it, it's not just helpful to us. It's not just enough to get by. Oh, it's more than that. A bologna sandwich will give us nutrition and get us by. A protein bar or shake will give us nutrition and get us by. But God's word is like that great meal. 
and it will give us a steady footing as we delight in God's word. King David writes, you reveal the path of life to me. In your presence is abundant joy. In your right hand are eternal pleasures. And Isaiah the prophet brings this great promise from God. Whenever you are tempted to turn to the right or to the left, you will hear his voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. That voice is God's word that we have savored, that we have digested, that has become part of us. It has become part of who we are by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that voice is the Spirit recalling Bible truth to us that we have taken in so that we might remain steady on the right path. God's word, the Bible, makes me steady. So, what is your favorite meal? How about we dig in to a feast on God's word that we might affirm with our psalm writer today, God's word, the Bible, makes me satisfied. It makes me strong. It makes me steady. Amen. Amen. Well, there's a wonderful old hymn that picks up on this very text today. Sweet are the promises. Let's sing it together. Sweet are the promises, kind is the word. Dear far than any message man ever heard. Pure was the mind of Christ, sinless was he. He the great example is and pattern for me. Where he leads I'll follow, follow all the way. Where he leads I'll follow, Follow Jesus every day. Sweet is the tender love Jesus has shown. Sweeter far than any love that mortals have known. Kind to the erring one, faithful is he. He the great example is and pattern for me. Where he leads I'll follow. Follow all the way, where he leads I'll follow, follow Jesus every day. List to his loving words, come unto me, weary, heavy laden, there is sweet rest for thee. Trust in his promises, faithful and sure. Lean upon the Savior, and thy soul is secure. Where he leads, I'll follow, follow all the way. Where he leads, I'll follow, follow Jesus every day. Amen. Sweet are the promises. Now, dear ones, don't go out and tell anybody that Pastor Larry gave you permission to overeat. The permission I'm giving you to gorge yourself is on God's word. But let it remind you about that favorite meal, maybe that meal that Mama made you that was always your favorite and how it made you feel and the comfort that it brought you and how it satisfied you made you strong because it was nutritious and it made you steady because you knew you could trust and god's word is like that meal to us it satisfies us god's word is so satisfying makes us strong spiritual nutrition 
and it makes us steady as we follow the path. Have a really wonderful week, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Uh, pray with me. Lord, thank you for this day and for all who have gathered, and uh, we ask your blessing upon us as we digest the meal we've had this morning of spiritual manna. Thank you, Lord. Be with each one every step of the way through the week ahead. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen.